everybody and welcome to the channel. Have you ever thought about this? Around 1159 AD, a mathematician called Bhaskara the Learned sketched the design for a wheel containing curved reservoirs of mercury. The way he saw it was that as the wheel spun, the mercury would find its way to the bottom of each reservoir, and this would leave one side of the wheel perpetually heavier than the other. The imbalance would keep the wheel turning forever. Pescara's drawing was one of the earliest designs ever for a perpetual motion machine, and if you look on YouTube you'll see design after design after design that reinterpret and reinvent this original drawing. A perpetual motion machine is defined as a device that can do work perpetually without any external energy source. Now this is very different from moving perpetually. Moving perpetually happens all of the time, but the minute you want to extract work out of it, you have to put work in, or it will stop. A way of looking at examples of this would be, imagine a windmill that produced the breeze that it needed in order to keep rotating, or a light bulb whose glow provided its own electricity, or a motor strapped to a generator where the turning of the motor turns the generator to produce the power to turn the motor. And these are all old ideas that you see rehashed time and time again. These devices have, and still, capture the imaginations of many inventors. And there are lots of reasons why. They could transform our relationship with energy. They could make the inventor famous and rich. For example, if you could build a perpetual motion machine that included people as part of its perfectly efficient system, it could sustain life indefinitely. There's just one problem. Up to press, they haven't worked. Ideas for perpetual motion machines violate one or more of the fundamental rules of thermodynamics which is a branch of physics that describes the relationships of one or more forms of energy. The first law of thermodynamics says that energy can't be created or destroyed. Basically, you can't get out more energy than you put in. That kind of rules out a useful perpetual motion machine right away, because a machine can only ever produce as much energy as it takes to run the machine. There wouldn't be any leftover to power a car or charge a phone. But what if you wanted the machine just to keep itself moving? Well, inventors have proposed plenty of ideas, and several of these have just been variations of Pescara's overbalanced wheel, with rolling balls or weights on swinging arms. None of them have worked. The moving parts that make one side of the wheel heavier also shift its centre of mass downward, below the axle. With a low centre of mass, the wheel just swings backwards and forwards just like a pendulum, then stops. What about a different approach? In the 17th century, Robert Boyle came up with the idea for a self-watering pot. He wondered that if capillary action, which is the force between liquids and surfaces through thin tubes, would pull a liquid through a thin tube, and it might keep the water cycling. But if the capillary action is strong enough to overcome gravity and draw the water up, it would also prevent it from falling back into the bowl. Then there are versions with magnets, like with a set of ramps. The general idea is that the ball is pulled upwards by magnets at the top, fall back down through a hole in the top, and repeat the cycle. This one fails because, like the self-watering pot, the magnet would just hold the ball at the top, because with enough force to raise it against gravity, it's just going to hold it. Even if it did keep moving, the magnet strength will degrade over time and eventually stop working. For each of these machines to keep moving, they would have to create some kind of extra energy that would nudge the system past its stopping point. A lot of people have built these machines, shown them working, and then revealed the trick. And a good many others, like good stage musicians, have never revealed the trick of how they get them to work. And I have heard it said that the hardest thing about building a perpetual machine is where do you hide the batteries? if you could somehow design a machine that didn't violate the th first law of thermodynamics, it still hasn't worked in the real world because of the second law. The second law of thermodynamics tells us that energy tends to spread out through forces like friction. Any real machine has moving parts and you have interactions between the air, the joints, the molecules, the oil in between the joints and these generate tiny amounts of friction and heat, even in a vacuum. That heat is energy escaping, and it would keep leaching out, reducing the energy available to move the system itself, until the machine inevitably stopped. 
So far, these two laws of thermodynamics have stymied every effort at perpetual motion. Now, the laws of thermodynamics are scientific laws, and that means they're different to ordinary laws. Laws like don't travel at 40 miles an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone. That one, you can choose to obey it or not, and if you choose not, well, your consequences may be a speeding fine and a slight feeling of guilt when you get home at night. A scientific law is just a description of something that's happened in our world over centuries that has been noticed by hundreds of thousands of people, distilled down to a very simple description that we give the title law to. Now I think science does itself a disservice by calling them laws because they're not, they're just descriptions of behaviour that lots of people have noticed. When it comes to thermodynamics, it's just describing the way a system behaves. In order for us to break a scientific law, what we need to observe is a different behaviour. That's why repeating the same old stuff is never going to lead to a machine that works with perpetual motion, because it's just the same behaviour, the same environment, the same techniques. There's nothing new there to make you question. The descriptions are, if you like, laws that people have already tried. But you can't conclusively say that we will never discover a perpetual motion machine, because there's still so much that we just don't understand about the universe. Perhaps we will find the new and exotic forms of matter that will force us to revisit the laws of thermodynamics. Or maybe there's perpetual motion on tiny quantum scales. But we could be reasonably sure of two things. One, none of the machines that have come before have worked. And two, we'll never stop looking. And for now, the one thing that seems truly perpetual is our search. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.